Week four, we are speaking about the power of words. I have selected two videos for our discussion board. The first one by Professor Arnold, and she's talking about the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. You may be familiar with this hypothesis from other courses. Great. If not, that's fine too. Sapir was a, or I think he's passed now, so was an anthropologist, and Whorf was a linguistics um, scholar. Obviously, they're not with us right now. But their work stands. Two terms we come up with, linguistic determinism and linguistic relativism. Please take time to pay attention to Professor Arnold's examples. She does an excellent job. I rewrote some of my notes to, so you can look at what I'm thinking and then watch the video and then watch it again. And the whole class is about monitoring your own actions, your own words, and words that you say in this particular instance. What are the words that you like to use? What's been effective? Now, if interpersonal communication is to maintain, to create um, healthy relationships, I'm not implying that there's anything wrong with your language, but just pay attention to it. What do you say to each other on a regular basis? Beyond your thous, to people in your life, your friends, your family, the yous in your life, what are your greetings like? What are your goodbyes like? What are your hellos by, um, like? Do you compliment each other through the day if, if, it's, if it's warranted, right? To be an upper like what are the words you use you know and we can go into very basic analysis your name why were you named what you were named some families are very specific when they're naming a child and there's a history and sometimes that history can make you feel good because you were named after someone who was beloved what about your pets you know, if you have a dog and you call the dog killer, uh, you might be implying something with that dog. But if you call the, uh, the dog whiskers, it could be a whole different feeling. You know, what's in a word, right? I've noticed through the decades that when students or people get tattoos, sometimes they get symbols, but sometimes they write, write scripture, write poetry, song lyrics on their bodies. So I'm assuming that those words are very specific to that person and that when they read them, they get a certain feeling so that it is important what is in a word. I've also noticed in decorating, uh, if you go to TJ Maxx or, or you go to Marshalls or Home Goods in the back, there's usually some like decorations that say uh, words, right? With sayings, and sometimes it's just like a word like uh, imagine, relax, breathe, faith, love. And it's just a word. Like, why would you decorate in a word? Well, usually, um, hosts and hostess and yourself, you put them out so you can reflect on those words because there's some power to that and there's some significance to it. But it's always subjective. It's always a decoding choice. It's not going to mean the same to everybody. And that is true. But how much do words mean to you? You know, we talk about interpersonal communication being the, the conversations between two people in small groups. But the first oral communication that you encounter is intrapersonal self, what you're thinking, what the words you're saying to yourself. You know, I remember that book, um, a child book, um, children's book, um, The Little Engine That Could, and hit the mantra was this little train that was small and was going to get over the mountain with all the toys to save the day, and the mantra as it was chugging along was, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, and that's very powerful for that train, and there's sometimes that when I'm in a um, situation that seems overwhelming, I think of that train, <laughs> I think I think I can. And then I think of uh, Finding Nemo, uh, when uh, the mantra is just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And somehow that word with that imagery is very powerful to me. So I've, I have noticed that. You notice your children, the words they use. And when you're, if you have children, you're lucky to have children, and you're trying, to, you're trying to get them to understand words and how important words are, their choices of words, and their language specifically. What, what words do they have at their disposal? And that's another thing that um, Professor Arnold talks about. The more languages you have, the more perspective you have, the more choices you have. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. And, I, and that it's interesting to see people who are bilingual, trilingual, how their perspectives change. And can you have the experience if you don't have the word? Like, which comes first, the word or the experience? So I love both these videos. And take your time notes only as, only as a friend of yours to help guide you through what I see as important. Watch the videos more than once. And each time.